Okay, so we call the meeting to order. Uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Alphabetical order. Mr. Jack W. Balch is excused. Mr. Kevin Holm. Here. Mr. Al Wazo is also excused. Mr. Jack Rogers. Here. Mr. Craig Steckler. Here. Move to approve. Can someone second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Project updates. Bob, you ready? Yes, sir. This is our, our our summary project schedule, and uh, which you received in your packet. And the blue vertical line is a status line of uh, today's date period, which gives you a good reference point of where we are with, with all the different items. In back of the line has been completed. In front of the line is. Uh, are the uh, work activities that will be ongoing. The finished date, as you see there, is the end date of all those different red bar lines. Uh, calling to your attention that the, uh, these, are, these are major line items that are very in important. Uh, about two-thirds of the way down the page, you can see that we've started the, the startup and commissioning, which will, which will run continuous up through the uh, first part of February. We then have our final inspections and our FLSO, which is the Fire Life Safety Officer for Oshpod. And once he makes his final inspections, uh, that pretty much uh, is, it means that we're, we're complete enough that we'll be able to uh, achieve substantial completion uh, by June 11th. And as you can see, there are grace period days there that if, if any of those line, lines or, or bar charts were to be affected uh, and to be extended out for, for whatever reason, there are grace period days there uh, that, are, that are deliberate to pick it up so we can still meet that June 18th date, which is substantial completion, which means the hospital can occupy for staff and stock, which is absolutely very important. And of course, our final completion date is, is uh, August 10th. Any um, particular questions on that that I can answer for you? Um, I was looking at site work. Um, looks like it's just going to get started. But what what is the site work? Is that actually cleaning up and? Doing the paving and doing that kind of stuff. Or? Uh, th th this site work would also include uh, the area, the blacktop area that we were walked on in order to get to the, the building there, and all the, the perimeter. That all has to be uh, completed and done. And we're going to anticipate starting that uh, as. as you, uh, probably for we'd like to start it sooner, but it probably won't start until. Uh, September, October. So yes, it is the it's the it's every the storage yard that's out there now. That it's <laughs> yeah, that's up and reorganized. Well, it, it, there's there's two, there's two different ones, two different site works that I should probably talk about for a minute. So the main one that is in the project right now and was. Um, it was in the price from Rudolph and Sletten is the uh, site work that starts at the front of the building um, and then wraps its way 
around to the side, and then there is a roadway that goes along the side of the building to the back, and then around the back where the loading dock is. That's all included in the in in the price or in the the dollars from uh, Rudolph and Sled. They have not bid that work out yet. We have a an allowance there, so. That's one thing we've found so far. I was one of the things I was going to get into in a minute. In, in a minute, is all these things that have been either deferred approvals or things that we made changes to, that uh, then got bidded bid late. While there are allowances in, what we're finding is three years after the bid came in, those prices are going up. So our allowances are proving not to be sufficient. The other thing about the site work you should just be aware of is. In the original plans, all that space that used to be the helipad and all that back parking lot, that was not included in this job. We've since got a design for that, um, and we had a lot of things going on with the city of Fremont in terms of bioswales and uh, for water treatment and um, permeable asphalt surfaces. Yep. Uh, that they, you know, required. So we have to go and we have to bid that out. We have to go first back to the board because it was not in the in the budgets, and then we'll have to bid that out. The intent is to try to get that done, either with the job or immediately after the job's done, so that all becomes workable. But that's not that whole back section, aside from the road that runs right along the building. The rest of it is not included in the job, in the job, or in the in the dollars right now. And there's a few things like that. Um, so I was intending to get into that in a minute, you know, as we go through this. I'll go, I'll go through the rest of it. But that's, that's what that's all about. Thank you, Ed. And a footnote to the errors that Ed has uh, just uh, described is uh, we'll have those, those bids for all that work uh, prior to the end of this month. And uh, interiors, it looks like you're pretty well along from what we've seen, but that's Looks like it's going to be done by the end of the year. Yes. End of the calendar year. That's correct. Yes, sir. What is commissioning? What is commissioning? Commissioning is uh, all the equipment and all the systems uh, throughout the hospital uh, has to be certified by an independent. Uh, commissioning agency, uh, and we're using the same one that we use for the central plant and the center for joint replacement. And they're very familiar with the documents and the whole routine that we're using and the Fong and Chan documents that were used for permit. And uh, all the different contractors uh, are all obligated to pre-test all the systems in accordance with the uh, specifications and contract documents. It's a very, it's a very rigorous. Uh, obviously, time-consuming. So it's, it's a final check, is what it boils down. Well, the, it, it goes. It's a continuous operation. Yeah. There, of uh, check, make sure the mode is there. And then the last thing that takes place is you check that whole system, whatever it may be, whether it's a, the HVAC, the return air. The, make sure it's all balanced and all that. Yeah. Gotcha. I understand. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> this cumulative um, chart that you have next is the the green line is the accepted forecasted cash flow that was achieved with the uh, general contractor's accepted uh, detailed construction schedule. And it was deliberately designed to be uh, front end loaded by the contractor because then all the trade contractors have to accept that schedule and everything. And, and so it, it is over aggressive, but it's to keep mainly the trade contractors on schedule. And the red line, as you can see, is the uh, accumulated actual uh, gross billings uh, by the general contractor and the trade. So they're, they're coming together. As you can see, and uh, the next the next chart, these are both tied together. The next chart is a bar chart that, that depicts the same thing. And you can see the red bars early on in the middle of the job uh, spiked. And that was the 
we were fortunate and received early delivery of all the HVAC uh, electrical switchgear equipment. And so we, we, did, we took early delivery. We were able to get that. So that we were able to get ahead of that cash flow, and now it's starting to balance back out. So uh, as you can see, by the end of the year, uh, they'll probably marry up pretty, pretty close. So as I look at this, um, I'm reading it as a budget to actual graph. Is okay. that pretty much what that's intended to portray for us, is budget to actual? Yeah. And the deviation, you say, is because we took free delivery of some stuff that you thought was going to come it's a later. timing difference. Yeah. 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 And the, the other one that we're uh, very fortunate to get the uh, Otis Elevator to deliver their five cars and start work on that. That was a, a big deal. To, and, and even then, they're working uh, uh, six days a week, ten hours a day on their own nickel to keep on schedule. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, since you're the, here for the first time, I'll try to give you a preview of what I try to cover in the end of the meeting. Thank you. Um, you've seen a lot of details about schedules. We use critical path scheduling on the job and cash flows and things like that. All those things, tools are designed to make sure we're staying on track with the job. So what I try to present at the very end is to kind of the, what's the bottom line? Are we winning or losing? Are we ahead of, or behind schedule? Exactly. And by how much? And um, I do that with what I call a dashboard. And on the right side of that is, is the cost data, and on the left side is the schedule data. And the sort of simple-minded um, approach of this is that the contractor needs to be earning at a rate that we're elapsing time on the schedule. And that's, that's usually a pretty good indicator as to whether you're on time or not. So, for example, if we look on the right side, where it says percent earned in the middle there at 76 percent, that compares on the left side with 68 percent elapsed time on the schedule. Mm -hmm. So that means that the contract is earning it at a rate faster than the, 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 the time is going by, which is obviously a positive sign, which we like to see. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're on schedule uh, by the critical path, but just because the contractor is earning money, it's what's important is he earning money on the critical path. And we have to look at the, at the schedule for that. The, so if you look, look at the lower left corner over there, the schedule float status. Float is simply the amount of time that's available if the schedule slips and so that you can still finish on schedule. In other words, if you had a 10-day float, positive float, you've got 10 days that the schedule could yeah. slide before you begin to be moving. You could have a semi-disaster and still absorb Exactly, a yeah. Bit. Pretty simple. And if it's negative, that's a bad sign. That means you, you've got to somehow get yourself back on track. Right now, we're running virtually zero float. Uh, you know, one one week it'll be minus, minus five days, then it'll be minus plus 10 days, and so it tends to fluctuate. Schedules are made by people, and they're not always per perfect. So it's a very stick to measure against. Yeah. And so anyway, the point is we, we've been tracking on this job pretty much on schedule all the way through. And, uh, you know, our folks from Jacobs and their folks put a lot of effort into working with a contractor to make sure we're staying there. Our, our real challenge from here on out is not the building itself because, as you saw, the building is pretty much getting finished. And as Bob was showing on his schedule, it's – it's uh, showing st uh, finishing ahead of schedule, hopefully, if we don't have any delays. What's really on the critical path now is getting some of the work that Ed was mentioning, the change orders for the, some of that site work that was not included in the original contract, and getting a loading dock uh, redesign completed, and getting the plaza that interconnects between this building and the existing building. And those things are... are are still critical, and we're, we're working on trying to make sure that they, those can be done. So when, when you say that uh, you're working on it, are they designed? But they're in different stages. We, we've we just completed um, approving the change order for the loading dock. We're right at the point where it can 
proceed. In fact, we've authorized them to continue with some of the critical early work uh, to, to be ready to go. I, I should interrupt that. There's two things. They're designed. Th that one, the um, loading dock, is designed and approved by OSHA. Um, the site work is designed and just got approved by OSHA. And it's now we're taking bids on that. The yeah. The end so of next month. step is, is, is bid. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. We had a design for the connecting corridor on the first floor between the two. And the dollars came from so That went through, was designed, Oshkot approved, put out the bid, and the bid came in way higher than what we wanted. I mean, <clears throat> we knew that it was going to come in higher than our allowance uh, when we, when we, when this project was done, and when, in, in other words, when it was designed, Oshkot approved. We were concerned, and this is old news for the older members of the of the board of the, of the longer tenured. Um, we were unhappy with all the connections, um, and so we redesigned all of them. So the the, uh, the basement, which is the loading dock connection to the hospital, is is fine. We're pleased with that. The um, the site work all was redesigned for ambulances, um, uh, patients, and that was all. We felt that was a little bit too confusing, so we got that all designed. That's all signed off and approved, as I just said. Um, the connecting corridor on the first floor has been a, it just has, has gone through multiple iterations. So we are in a redesign of that right now with a new budget of about $1.3 million, and it was it's designed to come in at that rate. Rudolph and Sletton has been involved. And uh, that's what we're working on now. The first one that was designed came in about $4 million. So that was totally outside of what we had uh, expected, and so we've redesigned. So that's, uh, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about is that um, the building itself is going along according to schedule, and we're very confident of it. It's the rest of the things that will probably push right up to our completion dates to get, to get done. The important thing for us on those, um, obviously, we could be running the building without having all the parking lots finished, with one exception, and that is that Oshpod has to allow you, they have to say, you've got all the things you need in terms of access, et cetera, to be able to operate the building. So we, we have to be very careful that we do meet those requirements, uh, e even if we may consider some of these things that could go beyond may, the finish date. We have to triage the work that gets done right at the end to exactly. get the building open and operational and then leave the other stuff yeah. to come after. Yeah. Right. Um, so that that's pretty much the report in terms of the schedule that we've just talked about. And uh, again, going back on the right side over there, the um, the contractor's earnings, again, are, are running about $5 million a month now. And so, you know, that's that's tracking on quite well. It was around 10, 10 million or 11 million at the peak, so we're about high for what we were at peak. The change order status, uh, uh, we were just did was just kind of outlining some of the major change orders, which are in those numbers that you see there. That is, we have request in for around eight and a half million, and we've approved of that about 1.1 million, and so the remainder is still in in various stages of completion to get to the point where we can lock in a firm uh, change order amount on those on those uh, contracts. Um, but anyway, if you look at the lower right corner there, it, that amounts to 5 percent. That is, the 8, the eight million is 5 percent of the contractor's earnings. And so that's within, within the reasonable range of what, what we had set up in the, con in the project budget to, to uh, to do that work. So unless there's some question on that uh, dashboard there, uh, that, that's pretty much the highlights on it. Um, the only question I have is in the area of change orders. Are uh, any of the change orders in dispute at this point as to who's responsible for it? Is it all change orders being initiated by the design team and the hospital? Or um, are there any things that uh, unusual circumstances that you've run into that that are in dispute as to who's going to pay for it. 
we really haven't had much uh, disagreement in terms of, uh, you know, who's going to pay for it or whatever. We we basically have different buckets in the in the budget for different forms of, of changes. You know, some uh, some of the changes that um, I think Ed was describing, that being the loading dock, the plaza, and things like that, we had set up in the project budget with estimated amounts. We knew we were going to do them if if the job stayed within budget, so we're just proceeding to do those. There's some other amounts in there that are that have to be negotiated with a contractor on a continuing basis. Uh, things that we do find that you know that you'll find on any job. Any job. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's why I ask. Is yeah. So we're, if, we're if, those get, if that gets to be a big number, then it's a problem. If it's just the normal yeah. day-to-day stuff, which is what yeah. happens. We we really want to avoid the case you were just. Referring to that is where we have some kind of a disagreement. We we had a we've had an excellent contractor on the job, and it's a very uh, candid negotiation of these kind of issues with them. Yeah. So right now the answer is we don't have anything that we're sitting on that we're that you anticipate a blow. We anticipate a blow up. The other thing I should report on because I I reported on this last time is that um, last time I had reported that we got two significant change orders that were we weren't anticipating, and that was, one was for the fire alarm, and one was for uh, the security system. And both of them were deferred approval items. So, in other words, they weren't in the final Oshpod set that was bid. Again, another issue where money was set aside um, on allowances to cover it. And those uh, changes, when they came in, were very significant, largely from the electrical contractor and we got change order requests for those two things that totaled about three million dollars. And um, in, the, I'm reporting this is post the May 31st date. In the last two months, uh, we have approved um, not everything according to that, but we basically know that out of that three million, we're agreeing to about one and a half million. We've signed off about. I think about 1.3 million of that in the last 60 days, so that will flow through um, next time. And that's the that that one. Those those were the big ones that were out there that we were concerned about. They were de- deferred approval. The pricing that came back two two years later, two and a half years later, was higher um, than anticipated. And um, so that those have been settled. And. Um, so uh, we're tracking forward. We're still within our allowances and contingencies. Um, so there, that would have been, I think, the biggest thing that was sitting out there. Those have been settled in the last six years. What was the uh, original amount that was, that was set aside? Um, offhand, um, I think it was in. It ran in a, in a couple of hundred thousand for both of them. So I want to say it was three to four hundred thousand. And they ended up both coming in in the neighborhood of eight or seven hundred thousand. So they were significantly higher. And um, you know, so we went back and uh, we did first of all a stringent review. Both we have an outside firm uh, that works with Jacobs, and then Jacobs has estimators. And um, you know, they found things that were in those change orders that contractually they were not allowed to put them in. So there was a lot of stuff that just right off the bat got taken out of those, and then they sat down and negotiated uh, the rest of the, what they were entitled to. I, d- I don't know if Bob or... or okay. So, but we, you know, they're not... They, we are continuing to get change orders. It's um, the majority... The hospital has made some changes. For instance, when we did the mock-ups, I think there was a total of 12 changes that we made. Um, none of them, uh, you know, offhand. I think we had one that was probably cost us about two hundred thousand, but the rest of them were thirty thousand here, sixty thousand here, some things like that. And there's been other things. You you saw the terraces. The terraces were something that the hospital, when we designed this this thing, we had an anticipation that patients would be able to have fresh air and be able to go out on the terraces. And the final design, because of the Oshpot approval, took a lot of th- those things away. In other words, the original idea was to t- was to be able to open up rooms to a terrace, and you can't keep your um, 
air balances and other required things and have the thing open to the outside. So we, we couldn't have those. And when the final plans came in, the hospital basically said, you know, this is an important enough thing that we want this in. And so we looked around what was possible, identified those two terraces on that side of the building specifically for the view and things like that versus looking towards the hospital, looking out to the open spaces, getting sun most of the year on that side versus, you know, it would be shaded a significant portion of the year on the other side. And so those have been designed and changed. Um, and that's going to be a change order that comes in. So, I mean, there have been some things the hospital has changed, but I have to say so far it's been, it's been pretty minimal. And I think the mock-ups proved to be a benefit for, for the final product we're going to get. So, so a lot of, but, but, so there's been a few things from the hospital, certainly not the lion's share of this $8 million, and it's mostly through the RFI process. That's what's happening. Yeah, sure. kind of, it's a simple question, but my understanding of change order is usually the customer is the one that initiates a change order. The contractor will come in with a request for clarification. Yes. So that eight million requested is that just change orders? Does that include request for clarification? Request for clarification, okay. information, yeah. all those things. Yeah. It, it, it really includes both. And in fact, uh, I mentioned we have different buckets. We have a bucket for <coughs> owner scope changes, that's things that we add. And then we have a separate bucket for those things that arise just out of the construction, the documents were not clear, the whatever, you know, uh, things like that. Okay. And so you deal with each, each one individually. Okay, I, um, I had one item that I, we've talked about, we've touched on in the past, and that is our insurance program. We have on the project what we call an OSEP, and that's an owner-controlled insurance program. And the basic concept of that is it's better to have the owner control that uh, and furnish various insurances than have all the different 40 or 50 trade contractors doing it individually. It, and that mainly is workers' comp and um, general liability insurance. But we do have under that umbrella more more than I know to <laughs> know about. Insurance expert can tell us that. But uh, it's been a very successful uh, effort. The last projects we did, the phase one, the central plant and so forth, we had a contractor-controlled insurance pro program. And our insurance advisor, Bob Ford, here said, I think you can save money and get better results with an owner control program, and that's what we're what we're using. Um, so when you say it's an owner control program, it's not self insurance. You're you're working with a third party insurance provider that you're managing. Yeah, we're, we're purchasing the insurance versus versus the contract versus the contract and subcontracting all the time. And it's being it's being managed by a, a agent of Aon Insurance Company. They they administer the program on our behalf. And so um, we, we had just received from um, our insurance advisor an update on how we're proceeding, and I want to just highlight a couple of things out of that report for you because I like giving good news, and this is good news. Um, his comment was that after two years of the OSIF, uh, uh, workers' comp claims experience remains favorable. There have been nine total claims. Four of them were lost time claims um, with uh, paid and, and uh, reserve losses of about $340,000, which if you think about that, we've had about 300 workers out there on the job. And so if you can have nine claims and only four of those l lose time, you're doing very, very good. Um, he, he went on to say uh, the hospital should continue to recognize RNS, that's our general contractor, for its ex ex extensive and proactive efforts and activities which have significantly impacted minimizing the OSIP losses. So uh, the, the effort's going quite well, and you know, we're, we're optimistic that uh, though, you, though we don't know what the losses are going to be until well, well after the construction is finished, uh, right now it's, it's going quite well. And, uh, so. On the mechanics of it, probably has nothing to do with this committee, but I'm just wondering, is the, the hospital um, is the contractor for the insurance programs, but how about the safety officer himself? Is that 
an employee of the hospital or is that an employee of the contractor or well to some extent you've got different safety officers that is there is one under the uh, the aon that's managing the, the whole thing they, they're administering and they have a safety expert on their staff the, 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 our general contractor here is extremely uh, safety focused they're, you know they they can go beyond what I've seen with most other general contractors and creating a culture of safety out on the job. Obviously, they have done And so they have, they have a safety expert of their own that's really doing all the testing, you know, the drug testing and qualifying people to get on the job and all that stuff. So. Thank you. It, it was projected when we started that we could save a couple of million dollars if we had good experience. And so far, it, it, it's, it's looking like that. Um, we still have a while to go, so we won't know for sure for another at least two years. Okay, so that, unless somebody, someone's got a question, that's all for my report. Oh, I have one simple question. There's been an acronym. I just want to make sure that somebody would ask me. Oshpon? I assume it's American Association of Hospital something or other. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what is it? It's, it's the organization, Office of State 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 Statewide Health Planning and, and Development. Development. And it is the, our, it does a lot of things with hospitals. Everything from our licenses, um, we have licensing fees that go through them. Um, and there's a variety of things that they have at the state. But um, uh, they, are the, they are the entity that is responsible for approving all hospital construction. A state organization for them. Yes, yes. And they have basically 100% purview over any construction that we do, down to if we want to change wallpaper, we're supposed to get approval to do that. So, I mean, it's it's highly Pretty regulated. Yeah. And it's something that we have to turn in things. And for this project, the approval process for the main project was almost two years. So we, did, we finish design and then turn it in, and then you're waiting until you have final approval. And there's various resubmittals and things like that. And they actually do the final inspections? That we have, we're required by them to have inspectors on site every day for the entire project. And they, re, they do reports and report back to a regional officer that comes weekly. So the, week, the, the OSHPOT officer comes weekly for inspections. The, the inspectors that we pay for but basically report into them, meet with them weekly to go over what's going on here, what the status is, any problems, what's been inspected, what's, what's approved, and field approvals. They come across something, they want to make sure that it's okay, anything that's been, they get, they have a discussion right there. Sometimes you'll approve it there, sometimes it gets kicked back to Sacramento. So it's very um, highly regulated, mm -hmm. highly regulated. And a lot of it, a lot of your success in a hospital uh, depends on your experience and working relationship with the people at Oshawa. Okay, and we're sure. fortunate in that our inspectors have been with us for ten years or more, and so they know the people at Oshawa. They trust each other, you know, and they can they can get a little more slack from Oshawa on things yeah. to, when we need it. And so yeah. that that's always good. To, Thanks. Uh, the big critical issue with Oshpod is always schedule. In other words, you know, we, we're driving to get stuff done, and they're saying, well, we need six months to review these documents. Yeah, it's a million dollars worth of work, and we need all that time to do it. And you say, well, can we, can we accelerate that a little bit? Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll run through the financials. Uh, and these numbers that we're going to be looking at are as of May 31st, which is the last uh, closed period. Um, so the spend on the job uh, between February and May 31st uh, was um, 17 point, a little over $17.9 million. Um, about a million of that went to architectural, primarily to architectural uh, component of the design. <laughs> architectural design and engineering line, uh, but we did have some um, some costs for third-party construction estimates and uh, also for uh, some of the commissioning services that we discussed a little bit earlier. Um, 
Construction management was, was on par with what we would expect. Uh, also permits and inspection uh, in that line, about $423,000, the, uh, the majority of that going to the inspectors that uh, Ray was just discussing. Um, we also had some Oshpod fees of about $5,700 and uh, uh, some fees from the city of about $4,700. Um, construction is where the lion's share of the spend was, as it has been uh, since we put the first piece of steel on the into the ground. Um, about almost uh, 16 million there. 15.8 of that was to the general contractor uh, for their services. We had some costs for PG&E and some costs related to the OSIP insurance plan in there as well. But again, the vast majority of that going to uh, the, the uh, general contractor. Uh, not much of a spend on equipment at this point. All, I think all the big stuff is here and done. Um, uh, a lot of that line is going to come in when we start buying equipment that's not uh, qualified for general obligation bond spending. So uh, again, in total, we spent about $17.9 million. Uh, as of May 31st, we've had total expenditures of almost uh, 241.3 million, uh, with 105 million, a little over 105 million remaining uh, in the budget. So, are there any questions on this schedule? Okay. Take a look at the estimate to completion. Um, again, uh, as of May 31st, uh, about 241.3 million dollars of spend. Current estimate uh, to complete the job is uh, 99 million, almost almost 99.9, .9, almost 100 million essentially, uh, to get the job done. Uh, so the total uh, estimated cost at completion right now is at 341.1 million. Uh, as you can see, you see the 695,000 sitting there. That's where we're starting to eat in a little bit into the general contingency of the job. Uh, leaving that general contingency at about a um, little, almost 5.4 million. Now that's not inclusive of the the various um, uh, allowances for the contractor and and uh, for the owner. So that's where we stand on the estimate to completion today. I think we'll know a lot more next quarter. We'll be able to refine this a bit uh, once we get some of these bids done and and uh, really be able to project. So the uh, electrician and the <coughs> security system. Yes, that was post May thirty first. Yes, but they this was in, those were included in these numbers in terms of our projection going forward. You're asking a good question, and one of the things that we've discussed, we um, put in here what we know and what we're getting solid numbers on. Yeah. Um, for instance. We've got an allowance in here for, as we've talked about, the site work. and um, But we have the site work going out the bid. We don't ourselves guesstimate and put in here, well, we think that's going to overrun, but we've got to have some level of certainty before we can project off it. And so we've talked about, as these numbers start coming in, getting more certainty and giving you, you know, yeah. um, the best the yeah best the next time we meet we should we should be able to really sharpen our pencils on these and and, uh, and, and have a pretty good feeling of where we're going to end up uh, at that point and there's always you know the, uh, the odd surprise um, but I think everybody's pretty confident by the time we meet next in these this bidding process that's we're undergoing now we'll be able to refine these numbers really well okay. my own sense is that um, we we aren't going to finish this project and have a lot of money left over. Um, if this was a this was a for a two hundred and fifty five million dollar construction project, six million dollars is not a big contingency, and um, we've had a lot of success in in the past jobs in terms of keeping it tight, keeping things tight, and being within budget. We still anticipate that'll be the case, but I don't think we're going to have money left over just the, just the way this is going and the way things have come in. We don't have some major surprise sitting out there that's going to take all this, but just the way we're going and these 
these later and renditions that we still are waiting for prices on that we know are going to come in higher. I just think this is going to be used up. So, and I was actually looking ahead, Chris, to the next slide because that, that led to my question coming into this meeting. I was wondering, you know, do you see anything that puts the project at risk uh, in total, or do you feel still pretty comfortable that you know, the funds available with the things that we expect to come up, we're still going to be fine? At this point, it looks like we're in good shape, yeah. and we we don't anticipate yeah, and, a problem. And we'll, why don't we move on to the yeah. slide in um, the next slide? Um, and I'm going to walk through this for Jack's benefit uh, in a little more detail. I normally would. Stacy, could you move to the next slide? Oh, please? sorry. Oh, Ed, okay. Um, <clears throat> we started this project with. Um, Almost two hundred and ninety million dollars with general obligation bond funding. Um, of that, uh, as of May thirty first, we had reimbursed ourselves almost two hundred and thirty five point four million, um, leaving a fifty almost fifty four point nine million of general obligation bond funds remaining uh, for the project. Um, we have some additional sources of revenue. And, and what's new since the last time we met, we met, and Kevin, hopefully this will answer your question, we did go to the bond market with some revenue bonds in April. We um, sold $38.5 million of revenue bonds uh, to round out the funding for the project. Um, uh, so of that right now, uh, for construction, it looks like we dip into almost $6.9 million, and the rest would be uh, for equipment expenditures. Um, we also have, at this point, uh, about $4.8 million in foundation uh, pledge funds uh, as part of their, their uh, construction uh, fundraising uh, activities. And we have uh, about $2.7 million of funds that were re remaining from an old joint authority that was dissolved back in the 1980s. And these monies back then were designated for a new emergency room. So um, that money we've held on to for all these years, and, and we'll be able to pull that in. So um, at this point, uh, we usually get down to um, that bottom line, which shows uh, what we need to come up with. And at that point, at this point is zero. In fact, we have some excess funds. Uh, sitting for uh, any additional uh, monies we may need and for equipment purchases. We're in pretty good shape uh, as far as funding goes at this point. So I was thinking about the, the parking lot, right? Uh, yes. Where the old helipad was. Was that included in, in the project scope for the geo bonds? Uh, it was not included in the, um, it, uh, I guess the. I, I guess my question is yeah. would the geo bonds. Should those funds be used for the helipad conversion of that part of the site, or is that something else? We, we will end up likely using the revenue bond funds for that because I think we have enough just in bricks and mortars construction to consume the rest of the geo bond money. Does, I, I, does I, that I, answer I, your question? No, my, I think my question is more, is it appropriate to use those funds for the helipad, old helipad site, or was that not part of the... It, it, was, put it was not part of the original plan. It may um, qualify for use for geo bond funds, but it was not part of the original plan for this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that would just be a question that I have. I don't know, yeah. you know, what the scope of the geo bonds was to whether that would include, you know, at some point the geo bonds only apply for a certain amount yes. of construction. Right? Yes. We, we um, I know from both elections we had to describe the scope, yeah. and um, I think, as Chris said, I think under the description it, it would probably um, apply. You could probably apply the funds, but uh, it looks like we're yeah. going to have we don't funds have from a different source. To use that money for that, we would. That money will go into the building. So when you talk about the revenue bonds, so you went to the market, you got six point nine more. Actually, we got thirty-eight point five. You more. did get a So of that, six point nine at this point would be would go to round out the construction. Got it. And again, 
that number may change w when we finish with these estimates that are that are uh, in process. But uh, we it really did round out the funding for this job. You might remember in the previous reports there was a bottom line that showed we had unfunded about five million dollars. Yeah, five point six million. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's now covered. So they kind of balance it out with that. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. Because I was looking at the chart and I'm wondering. How did you get to zero? <laughs> there <laughs> has to be something. Yeah, good. Well, I mean, we've been and we've been. As you might remember we've been talking that yeah. we, that m would either be funded from hospital reserves or we would go back out to the bond market. Okay. So we did go back out to the bond market uh, in April. Okay. And it, it was a good time to go because rates. Yeah, they just rates jumped. are at an all time low. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm I'm finished saying that rates are going to go up, <laughs> rates are going to go up, rates are going to go up. I've been saying it for eight years, and they haven't gone up. <laughs> so of your revenue bonds, uh, yeah. you've obligated roughly $7 million of that yeah. uh, to construction. Yeah. The remainder will go for equipment, is that? Yeah, equipment. Uh, the charge of this committee uh, is to oversee the general obligation bond? Correct. But not the revenue bond? Correct. Although if they interact, I guess we're yeah. I just yeah. I include that so you know sure. that we yeah. got the funds to, to complete the yeah. building. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And we'll we will certainly be reporting on the equipment spend to this committee. It's one of the line items in the, in the yeah. overall budget. And my last question has to do with the reimbursement. Um, I assume that the two hundred thirty-five thousand change here um, was advanced by the hospital. Million. 235 million. I'm sorry, uh, 235 million was advanced by the hospital at one point when you said. So no, those are the, so those when we issue the general obligation bond funds, they go to a trustee, uh, and as we sp as we spend, we reimburse ourselves from those funds gotcha. through a, through a process. Yeah. Just the word reimbursement. I was trying to figure reimbursement from who. To yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure. Anything else? Yeah, I did want to report uh, back that um, since the last meeting, um, we had sent e uh, each of you a copy of the annual report, which I, I, I gave you a final version here. We did incorporate the comments people made when they got back to us, and Jack Balsh did make a presentation to the uh, board of directors of this report, which is should be identical to the rest of the to what you had seen earlier, and it was uh, it was well received. The uh, that's the good news. The bad news is it's already past June 30th, 2017, and we have to be working on another one. We don't. We obviously have to wait until we get final financials. So. We'll be working on that, coming back to you. Usually the time frame is we get back to you around January. We should have uh, an annual report for you to, to take a look at. And so we'll, we'll start work on that. But um, uh, I just wanted to make sure you were aware that it went forward to the board and uh, was available to the public um, at that meeting. And if anybody calls in and wants a copy, it's, it's available. Not necessarily with the construction, but... How many additional personnel do you anticipate adding to the hospital staff once you open that center? <laughs> well, that is that, that's a good question, and um, it's one that we're working on budget-wise. Uh, basically, our budget year runs July to January to June, June thirtieth, and so we're going to be working on that in the coming year for the new budget. Uh, because we'll have to budget for that and hire people. It's. I think the anticipation is that it's we're going to get hit, um, or we're going to need a lot of additional support people. You know, the the cleaning, the engineering staff for that additional square footage. Um, but we're closing down a number of beds, or close, or making uh, semi-private rooms private. So there's a certain amount of of the, the ancillary and the nursing staff that will actually just transfer to the new location. For instance, the emergency room will close down in its current location and will be moved over. It is going to have a few more beds. Uh, you know, we're going to go from about 25 to close to 40 beds, so it does increase in terms of total size. And as that, if as 
you know, knock on wood, it's being built with the anticipation that we'll be able to take care of all patients. And there's a few patients now that um, that will leave without being seen because of weights and things like that. That those people will will um, will stay, and those numbers will go up. And then, based on what happens with that, we would increase our staffing. But it really, we're not going to be staffing up in anticipation. We'll be responding to what the demand is, and then staffing up in terms of the nursing and ancillary side. There will be some additional, you know, I think, for instance, like a critical care area. We're going to be expanding greatly in size there. We'll have to staff up in, in anticipation so that, you know, should that grow, uh, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to um, be able to respond. And the anticipation is that it will grow. Um, so there's, we're not going to be adding staff that, that is going to be incrementally 100% per those beds. It'll be incrementally what's what's larger versus what we're running today in the main hospital. Yes. But, but as far as clinical staff goes, we flex those based on our volume and how many people we have in the house. And that process will continue. But again, as Ed mentioned, the biggest impact we're expecting to be in maintenance and, and housekeeping. The second question I have is, is there, is there in the hospital general operating budget yes. a training element for people that are going to be going to a new facility, they're going to be using new equipment, new computers? And no. yes. Obviously, there's a learning curve there. Yeah. Nancy, yeah. Uh, our CEO, Nancy <laughs> Farber, um, really wants to spend a few months just working with the building before we put patients in there. So for those very reasons, to train staff so staff can get oriented so they can work on their workflows and their work processes. So yes, when we, when we get to that fiscal year 2019 budget, we will be budgeting money for that. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? That's it. That's it. Meeting over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.